Today we are learning <clears throat> again the Kuti Torah, book written by the first Rebbe of Chabad, designed solely and uniquely to bring Mashiach. The Rebbe spoke several times, this is one of the ways to actually bring Mashiach. And as we all know, that Mashiach is going to be a great Jewish leader that's going to awaken Jewish awareness and bring the world to total peace and brotherhood and productivity and happiness and meaning. Oh, very nice. Good morning. Okay, here we go. Nasoi et Rosh Benei Gershon Gam Hain. That's how this Torah portion starts. Right, last week we sort of touched on the tribe of Kahat, what they do, how they lift up the vessels of the temple, when, of the tabernacle, when the Jews were traveling in the desert. So they had to take apart the tabernacle and carry it with them. And so the Levites, that was their charge. Their charge was, and their, 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 their job was to take apart the Holy Temple, the, the Holy, there was the forerunner of the Holy Temple, the tabernacle, to take it apart and to carry it and to put it back together again. So now we're discussing what exactly the Levites would do, how the Levites would do. So in general, there were three families of Levites, Kahat, and the family of uh, Gershon, and the family of Merari. Kahat, Gershon, Merari. And these three families, they each had their own job they had to do. And they, they had their special place also where they were camped right around the, the uh, tab <coughs> tabernacle in the desert. So we learned last week that the, the tribe of Kahat, they carried the ark and the the two uh, altars and the other vessels and this week we're going to learn about Gershon that he carries the the uh, curtains there's curtains all around the whole temple of the tabernacle they carry them and the, the pillars that stand that stood these stood these curtains up held them up around the whole courtyard and then we'll learn about uh, Murari. And Murari, he carries like the boards of the, uh, the holy and the holy of holies. That's the main thing that he carried. <clears throat> now we're going to learn about this. <clears throat> Not just what was, but what is. I mean, there, there was only the tabernacle was carried around in the desert. And when they got to the land of Israel, they didn't carry it around anymore. They set it up in one place called Gil Gilgal. That was 14 years. And then they went to Shiloh for another like 300 and whatever, 69 years. And then they they were in uh, Nob for a while. And they were, but in any case, the, the, this is a this is a one-time thing, basically. So what's so important about I mean, why is it even written in the Torah? First of all, the Torah is supposed to be some sort of an eternal book. This seems to be an indication that the Torah is just a history book. Right? Wrong. You're, it is definitely an indication, yes, but we cannot take things at face value. Nothing at face value. And the Torah is coming to tell you not just that God creates the world, but why he's creating the world. So the, the reason he's creating the world is so that people will serve him, especially the Jews. That was the job of the Jews. Jews are created to serve God. That's what Moses said when he asked Paro, let the Jews, let my people go, and they will serve me. And when God promised Moses at the burning bush, the Jews are going to go out of Israel, <laughs> go, go to go to, out of Egypt, they're doing it in order to serve me on this mountain, on Mount Sinai. That was the whole secret of serving God. Now here, the, so in, especially the temple. The temple was certainly, that was the place where it was the center of serving God. 
and Mashiach is going to come and build a third temple. It's not going to be a spiritual place. It'll be an actual physical place that's going to be built. According to a lot of opinions, it's going to come miraculously from heaven. And this third temple is going to, the main thing is serving God. And we, we said this a lot of times, that's why the third temple will be built. And then all the Jews are going to come to the land of Israel because they want to serve God. So this is the whole idea of serving God. Okay, now we also serve God, right? We're also serving God, no less. How, do you, how are you supposed to serve God? So it says, well, that's what the temple is for. That's what tabernacle is for, to teach us how to serve God. Eh. Eh. Listen to you like that. Your, your, your picture is dominant over here. I'm trying to get... Ah, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So that's what the Torah is for. The Torah is for to teach us how to serve God, how to learn from everything we see in the world, especially from the words of the Torah, especially words of the Torah that are talking about the temple, the tabernacle, which that's the whole thing of serving God how we can serve the creator of the universe. Uh, nothing better than that. Serving the creator of the universe. If you're a doctor or if you're a lawyer, or if you're, a, you know, you're doing an important job, you're bringing health and justice into the world. But if you're serving God, which it does not preclude being a doctor or a lawyer, but if you're serving God, then you're bring, bringing blessing into the world. And that's what we're talking about here. That's how Parshat Naso, that's how it starts up. Naso is Rosh Ben Israel. It means lift up the heads of the sons of Gershon. In this case, it means count. Count the numbers of the people. Make a head count. Count the numbers of the tribe of Gershon. Okay, but the simple meaning is lift them up. In other words, appoint them. Appoint the people of Gershon. What are they supposed to do? Yeshlav, and we have to understand. Lama Neamar, why was it said Bimene Girshon and Bimene Girshon Gam Hem? That's what it says. If you look in the Torah portion, it says Naso et Bimene Girshon Gam Hem, also them. Right? We explained already the, the previous, the end of the previous Torah portion, we just <coughs> read on Shabbat. We talked about the, one of the three families of the Levites. And now we're talking about another one. And then we'll talk about the third one. Why does it, on this one, it says, also them. <clears throat> <clears throat> What's this mean to us as far as our serving God? Let's, first of all, let's, we'll see what serving God means. Gam also, Mashkadu, that what it says, B'vene Gershon. Why does it say this by B'vene Gershon? Why does it only say by the the the, tri, the family of Gershon? <clears throat> only by them does it say Gam Kain also. Gam Kain it says. Remember this question because we're going to talk about a lot of other things until we get back to the answer. The Davgal Piaron and it says. <clears throat> <clears throat> according to Aaron and his sons. <clears throat> Elazar and, and Itamar, Tia will be ga call avodat bene Gershoni. And it doesn't say by Kahata Mori, it doesn't say by them it's going to be according to the directions of Aaron and his sons, even though that it certainly was. Ach barhine. So Tahila Turklavin, first of all, we have to understand Khalasa in Yana Mishkan Venasiab Midba. Let's understand, first of all, what is this thing of the tabernacle and it traveling in the desert? What does it mean that the tabernacle traveled in the desert? <clears throat> what does this come and tell us? He may behold the shorish, the source. Shorish, Tom, Nasir, the Midbar, the reason that the Jewish people had to travel around in the desert for 40 years, even Mishkan with the tabernacle of Akelim and all of the <clears throat> vessels in the tabernacle, with the, the menorah, with the, the, with the candelabra, and the, the altars and things like that. Hayekadeh is ordered, Lahachnia, Koach, Yanika, Sechitsonian, 
in order to subdue the power of evil. Chitzonim means evil. Sheshorish Yenikasim, that the source of them, who is the Midbar, is in the desert, Davka specifically. Okay, God creates the world, right? The God creates the world, <clears throat> and he creates a lot of bad things too. A lot of bad things. But bad things are not bad if they're put in their place. Right? Like, for instance, a desert has all sorts of scorpions and snakes and weird animals there, and nobody lives in the desert. So what are you supposed to do with it? Don't live there. Don't live there. Right? You read about it in, in a book, in a, geom- in a geography book. Right? There's a Sierra, Sahara Desert, and there's this desert, and there's that desert. <clears throat> so the good, there's a desert. Leave the desert alone. Says the Rebbe, but inside of us, there's also a desert. There's also inside of us, there's a desert. What is the desert? The desert is the potential to go against God. Simple language, selfishness, negative things. It's called a desert. A desert is a place where there's no godliness. There's no purpose. There's no reason. You're just there. Right? A desert. A desert is just this like wasteland that nobody can figure out why it's there. And you don't have to figure out why it's there. Just avoid it. Just avoid it. Also, there's parts of our personality that we have to avoid. Right? Avoid depression. Avoid lust. Avoid <clears throat> the anger. These are things you're just supposed to uh, avoid. But that's part of your personality. So what if a person doesn't avoid it? Then he's in trouble. He gets into trouble. All of a sudden he thinks, whoa, look at how real anger is. You know, what's the thing? This, this is another option for me in life. You know, I can get angry. I can have lust. I can, have, <clears throat> I can get addicted. Well, this is amazing. Look at this. I can get addicted. This is a whole new wonderful world of addiction and aggression. And, then, and people get caught up in this. That, that's called yenikat achitzonim. means that if the desert is in its place, then it's okay. But as soon as the desert starts to take over the rest of your you decide you want to live in the desert, then you've you got problems. you got big problems. Now, and that was, the, that was the whole case. That's how God created man. That's the way God created man. That's a full person. He has the potential that he can do all these bad things, and he doesn't do it. This is a unique thing. Angels don't have that. No other creation in the world has it. Animals don't have it. The, 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 the angels, whatever spirits don't have it. The, the potential to do bad or to do good, to make a choice this way or that way. That's a very unique human thing. <clears throat> Says, so, so you know, if, yeah, on the other hand, a person could say, listen, if God created it, so let everybody do what they want to. What, what do you care what people do? It's a creation of God. So let people, you know, they want to get angry. They want to be destructive. They want to be, you know, to take over the world with bombs and things like that. Why not? Let them do it. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an option. You can do it, right? So he says, right, you, you got a good point, 100%. But God gave the Torah. And the Torah says there are certain things which are conducive to life and which bring blessing. And there are certain things which are conducive to death. And they bring, bring curses. Bring curses on him. Like it says, like Avram. Oh, sorry, sorry. I skipped the line. Hine, behold. No, I skipped more than I thought. Here we go. Lochem, therefore, Lochach, therefore, but Midbar, and this idea of the desert, ain't shom gidl tzamach, no vegetation can grow, the desha or whatever is, uh, grasses, kalal at all. Ella, the only thing that grows in the desert is wasteland, with desolation. Desolation. There, the, the desolation grows really good there. Key because Ashpa he misitra the kedusha because any time that there is a blessing, blessing always comes from holiness. Life and holiness are synonymous. Life and and holiness are synonymous. The holy temple was holy because it gave more life. People want that they felt more happy. They felt more meaningful. They felt that life is good. That we're here for a purpose, something higher. Because even it says tzaddik Hashem, the God it says that by God that He's a tzaddik. Tzaddik. What does it mean? Tzaddik is the aspect of giving over, giving over. Tzedakah, who mashpia obal tzedakah. Tzedakah means charity. God just gives. The king also, because Sitra the Kedusha, and also everything that is on the side of holiness, the idea of holiness is 
giving life <clears throat> a happiness, meaning, in a behold, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, God, Chesed Nimshach Mitzad Gedula. By God, his aspect of kindness, of life, of giving, creating. This is what's called God's greatness. Kamosh Gatuv, Erech Apam, Godol Chesed. Like it says, by God, it's great is his kindness. Bukhal Sitchit the Gedusha, and anything on the side of holiness, Chesed Nimshach Mitzad Bitl. Kindness comes because of what surrendering one's ego. Shabbat Allah Hashem, that a person negates himself to godliness. You can be a conductor. But you, you want to do something that's holy, how do you have to do it? Holiness means being connected to God. Holiness means connected to God. That's what holiness is. You want to go, you have, you have some sort of religion, you want to go to heaven, you're thinking about going to heaven. You look in the book, how do I go to heaven by doing this? That's not holiness. Holiness is the opposite of selfishness. The opposite of selfishness. If everything a person does is, is for the sake of honesty, is for the sake of good, for this, right? It's like anything, like in an, in, 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 in a, an orchestra, right? An orchestra. So the, if a person just lives musician for the music, then that's a true, that's, if he lives because he gets attention from the crowd or he makes money from it, or it, it gives him a name or something like that, then okay, he'll be a musician, but he's never going to be the top musician. He's never going to really you know, get it because he loves the music. He's using the music. The same thing is with life. If a person just uses life for what he's going to get, what he's going to receive, then he's never going to be happy. It's not really life. It's always worry, religious. It's always this, right? It says the whole side of holiness is when people don't think about themselves. They think about what does God want in this world, this physical world. God will take care of going to heaven. Don't but call Sitra the Katusha, that's chesed is drawn because of bitl. Bitl means <clears throat> we say surrender, uh, harmony, being harmonious with God. Shabbat al Hashem, that is totally negated to Hashem. Like, a, like a, the, the, the violinist in the orchestra or whatever, he's, he's negated to the music. That's all he wants. He wants the music to be beautiful. Same thing, he's totally negated to Hashem. Doesn't mean that he stops being. The violinist, if he's negated to the music, it doesn't mean that he doesn't play. Exactly the opposite. He has to play. <coughs> Same thing, a Jew, if he's negated to God, it doesn't mean that he stops living. He becomes a zombie. It means exactly the opposite. That activates him, that he wants to do his part. And from that, it spreads to all the, the, the world, the whole entire world. Then, to then a person treats himself like he's nothing. Lochen, therefore... Royally tain Zula, so therefore he wants to give to others. Shu Hashu Vyote, the other person matters more than me. Right? He sees something that's lacking. So he wants to feel the other person how, how much the other person is lacking. Kamush Kutub, like it says, but Avram. I know he offer for Afer. Like Abraham said, I am just like dirt and ashes. Why? Because Abraham he felt he was just being created by God all the time. And he's being created by God for a purpose. And as soon as he saw somebody, suddenly he says, listen, this has to activate in me something. What am I supposed to do to make the situation better? And he was just like a, want to call it in the hands of God, just like a tool. Right? Like the violinist and the orchestra. He just wants to part, be part of this beautiful harmony. Therefore, therefore, Abraham, he was the first Jew. He just did kindness and called B'nai Adam with anyone that he could. Which is not the case, which is not the case, someone who is an egotist, and he's a separate <coughs> existence on himself. He's selfish. And he's not negated to Hashem. He's not in harmony with the creator of the universe. Everything he does is for himself. And he does not give. That's what all basically all the religions in the world are also. Right? You're going to go to heaven. Think about it. You're going to get it. Makes everybody uptight, makes everybody feel. Therefore, <clears throat> therefore, in the desert, there are snakes and serpents and scorpions. 
<clears throat> what's that? That's called gimoclipus. That's what's called the three impure shells. So three different levels of selfishness. No, it doesn't work. Maybe you get too much. Hine, behold. Therefore, the Jewish people and with the ark, together with the ark, and this tabernacle, that was the main thing of the tabernacle, was the ark and the altars. They, dra- they traveled in the desert. Today, in order to subdue, subjugate the desert. Therefore, therefore, they carried this tabernacle in the 42 journeys that they made, which just represents one of the names and aspects of God, which is called the name of 42 letters. Means of the revealed God in the Mishkan that was in the Mishkan. When they took it into the desert, automatically it became subdued. Like it says, behemoth donig cooling. Like sometimes they used to, they, they, they made, a, you make a, a village or something in the middle of the desert. So who wants to live in the middle of the desert? It's terrible. You can't, so you, they bring water. They bring water somehow or other. They bring uh, the, the, the irrigation and they make it in the middle of the desert. Well, eventually what happens is, is that the climate starts to change. The climate starts to change. There's a little bit of water over there, and then there's plants and the shade. And then from the shade, they can grow things. Maybe they have to fertilize the ground. But then it becomes like a, a whole new ecosystem. And maybe the, the people come to live there, and then the, because people come to live there, so maybe there's you know garbage. They can fertilize the ground with it also. <clears throat> and the more people that live there, and et cetera, et cetera, until finally the place becomes a livable place. Well, that was the same thing over here. But here we're talking about spiritually. The, the, the tabernacle went through the desert and the Jewish people there made blessings and they, they, they made sag- with the sacrifices and, and they did the commandments and they learned the Torah. And this spiritually changed the desert. Now here's, we have a very big, major point, a very big point we have to make over here. Very, very important, very important point. And that is that the whole world depends on the Jews. That's what it says in the Torah. The whole world depends on the Jews. The Jews are not just, you know, an, an, uh, how do you say, uh, an autonomous group floating through this, you know, reality, floating through time, sitting on some mountain. You know, the Jewish people, the, the, the whole entire world creation depends on the Jews. <clears throat> it depends on the Jews. So what does it mean depends on the Jews? If the Jews do what God says and do, then the whole world becomes good. The whole world becomes a good place. And the people are the evil people and the bad people. Either they all transform and they just realize it's, you know, they can get whatever they want to. Or the people that just want to be evil, so they just, they're cut off from life. They're just cut off from the creator of the universe. And who knows, I don't know what happens to them. It doesn't do, <clears throat> but that's what it says. It says like like wax is melted. So also the powers of se- false selfishness and egotism, like we said before, right? That the, the world no more, for instance, addictions. The world can get along really good with no addictions if there's no more addictions, right? True, there won't be people to you know drug traffickers and and you know the, the human traffickers. They won't. They'll they'll be out of work for a while, but eventually they'll also benefit. Or they'll just be out of work. You know, I mean, those people who needs drug traffickers and, you know, who needs it? That's, that is certainly a job that can be done without. So it all depends on the Jews. If the Jews really do what they want, then there's tremendous blessing in the world. And that's the whole idea of the Jews going through the desert by the Jews doing what they're supposed to when they went in the desert. So this, a certain degree, subdued and even transformed the desert. By means of the revelation of godliness that was there, so it says like wax melts in front of fire, so all the powers of evil and selfishness went away. To'elas hachnazu, 
<clears throat> what what's so what's the point of this? What's the point of so they went through the desert and they negated, they subdued, they transformed the desert. What's the point of it? Is the point of this is the Indian Hachna Asid Lavo. This is the humility which will be achieved by all mankind in the future. That's the whole idea of the Mashiach. The Mashiach will simply put everybody <clears throat> into a state of gratitude, gratitude and humility, not to be humiliated. And, and what do you want to call it? The humility, there's a better word, a nicer word, humility. Uh, but, um, uh, <coughs> I don't know. We'll talk, humility is a good word. I think of another word afterwards. Al Yudei, by means of Shinichna Tehila, that by means of that, first of all, you negate the power. And we're getting to get back to all of the Gershon Marari and this, this. We're going to get back to this by means of <coughs> negating all this. There can be revealed godliness in the world. Hashafal, this low world. And therefore, what is Shalono? Shalono. Like it says, Vanilla Kaboravai, there will be revealed the light of God, by means of that the world becomes harmonious with godliness, Tahila first, Makar Aseta, first of all, the source of darkness, Vayesh and egotism, selfishness, then Yochalios there can be afterwards, Gile Lasilavo, a revelation which is in the future. Maybe we could say this is like what it says that by means of serving God, first of all, we have to have eskafia. And I'll tell you what that is. But in order that by means of that, there can be afterwards level as eshapcha chashuchal and Similarly, by serving, this is the footnotes of like the third Rebbe of Chabad. And similarly, it is that's how what, what is serving God? Serving God is first of all, you have to make a battle against your own nature. That's called eskafia. Eskafia means you have to force yourself to do good and force yourself to refrain from bad. Forcing yourself. Eskafia. Kofe. First of all, a person has to force himself. Nobody naturally puts on tefillin. Nobody naturally keeps Shabbat. Right? No one naturally avoids eating milk and meat together. <clears throat> Naturally, what difference is it? Sunday, the, the, the Shabbos is like every other day of the year. What could possibly be the difference? What, what's the difference if you eat the, the milk and meat separate or if you eat it together? What's the, what's, what could possibly be wrong with it? So the answer is, is they're right. Naturally, nobody keeps the Torah. Naturally. Maybe there's people that naturally don't like to kill. There could be. There's people that don't like to kill. And even those people, you get them mad enough, right? The next door neighbor drives over the lawn enough times. Who knows what, what a person is, is capable of doing? <clears throat> and the world, you know, that, that, that turns you against the other people and your mind that makes all sorts of tricks. Who knows? Steal. All these things are natural character traits that people never would think in a million years would steal or do these things. All of a sudden, they catch them stealing, right? All of a sudden, they find them embezzling or whatever. So that's the whole purpose of the Torah. The Torah is there to tell you to change your nature. Nature does not dictate that a person should, you know, they eat matzah on Passover. And the... No one would come to this naturally. It says Abraham did. He came to it naturally. He was, he was so tremendously devoted and curious and thirsting to be serving God. So he came to this, right? He was to the degree that he had had uh, do you say yeah, the, 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 the humbled himself to the creator of the universe that Abraham came to the conclusion that there are all these commandments he came to that's the, who's going to do it like that well, the Torah was given in order to change that that's called escafia forcing yourself forcing yourself to do bad forcing yourself to do good and forcing yourself not to do bad don't take me out of context Then after that, there's what's called eshapcha. Eshapcha means you actually enjoy, you really feel the goodness, the godliness, the life, the pleasure in doing good. 
and you feel how terrible and disgusting and <coughs> wrong and bitter it is to do something bad. That's called as hapcha, transformation. Transforms darkness to light. <clears throat> without this level of eskafia first, without having this thing of controlling yourself first, forcing yourself to do good and to turn from bad first, you can't come to transforming darkness to light. First of all, you have to force yourself and then if like, like playing piano, right? You ever play piano, you have to take lessons and you control your fingers a little bit. And then after your fingers are they're controlled, then, you know, there's sometimes there's people just geniuses, you know, Mozart, who knows these people? And then they just, they, they, they just take to the thing like, you know, a fish to water. And one day they learn how to play piano and then, then the next day they're just writing, you know, concerts. And, but that's very, very real, rare. In order to serve God, first of all, you have to train yourself. You have to go against your nature. And then afterwards, it says you really appreciate God. You love God. You, 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 you're, you're in awe of God constantly. And similarly, in order in the future, in the future redemption, there should be revealed godliness in the world. And this is, by the way, how it was when Adam was created. If Adam wouldn't have eaten from the tree. And again, there was another chance when, on Mount Sinai. But those were only local revelations. In order there should be revelation in God in the world, that the darkness should be transformed to light. Like it says, the eight Erevia, or like it says, in the time of evening, there will be light. Therefore, there has to be, first of all, first of all, you have to subdue the desert. Ayin Mashikatu, look over, says on the Mase. Later on, we'll learn about this. Inyan Agilui, this revelation that's going to be in the future by means of the Mashiach, who Kihine Be'emes really Kame Atzmusi Yisparech, Ein Shum Bechines Hester Vehelam Klo. By God, there's no concealment at all. Ki Kame Kula Kalochashi, because in front of God, everything is like nothing. Be'ein Shinoi Klo, there's no difference to God between. Before the world was created and after the world was created. And there's what we're we saying here that the God is, there's nothing outside of God. God creates everything. We learned other places, but in order for God to create, God's reality is so intensely real, it's un, not like anything. It says that if an angel would reveal himself to a person, the person would die. It's just too much, too much revelation. It says in the, in the, the that the, the reason that the that what is it the, that Hagar she could see angels she was used to seeing them in the house of Abraham she got used to it if you got to her you but a person sees an angel he goes no, angels are just creations of God it's like nothing angels it says when God puts his little finger it says he burns up all the angels the reality of God is so intensely real we can't imagine that there's anything more real than us that's our big problem we're like living in the desert. We're, de we're de detached from real life. But in the future, there's going to be real, true life and real, true reality will be revealed. We'll feel that we're being created. We'll feel that we're being created for a purpose. We'll feel our creator. <clears throat> that's what it says. That's, when that is felt, it's going to be such an intense level of life and reality. And and, 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 and meaning and blessing that it's going to be something <clears throat> amazing because in front of God, the whole world doesn't exist. It does not exist at all. And that shows the amazing miracle of this world that the world is being brought into existence constantly because, from God's love. In other words, God wants us to be here and he wants us every single instant to be here. We feel, the, we'll feel one of the things that the Mashiach will feel the intense love of God, the whole world will feel it, that he's creating us. This physical world, people won't think about going to heaven anymore. This world will be infinitely more real. People won't want to leave it. They won't want to leave this world even in thought. <coughs> What's going to happen after I die? What are you talking about? Because also now, because even now God is one. And totally unified, just like before the world was created. Because all of the creation of the world is something from nothing. 
There's a whole process how God creates the world. He, he, he creates the world by means of letters. The letters of his speech. Like it says, from the word of God, the heavens are made. Just like one word of a person. When a person speaks one word, that one word is like nothing compared to this power of thought. When the word, when the word you say, for instance, you say the word house, right? That word before you said it was in your mind. Where was it in your mind? It says in your mind that word house, it didn't have any place at all. It was it was nothing. Where was the the word? Not just the word before you spoke it. The word before you thought it. Where was that word? And it, it was there. It was inside of you. It was a potential, but it didn't take up any place at all. Only when you speak, it comes out. <clears throat> then you can hear, and the word becomes something separate. Also, it is by God. The world is created by God's letters, the letters of God's speech. The Yud Maimoros and the ten utterances, utterances, Nagabi and Nivroim, these ten utterances that God creates the the world with, and he creates the angels with, and he creates all these upper spiritual worlds. <clears throat> He's creating it all, yesh so the word of God is infinitely more real than the world. But on the other hand, the word of God is infinitely nothing compared to God himself. So therefore, the world seems to be a separate thing. Of the God Muso is very good in regarding to God's essence. The world is like nothing. What do you mean like nothing? It's, it's, it's infinitely more nothing than what we think is nothing. Right? But we, what is by us, what is the idea of nothing? You have something, you take it away, that's nothing. <coughs> I had money in the bank, I, no, I took it out, now I have nothing, <coughs> nothing in the bank. Right? But by God, he knows what nothing is, he knows how the world was before it was created. That was a level of nothing that we can't imagine what it is. <clears throat> That's what it is now. If the world was standing on absolutely nothing, God is creating us all the time. It's an incredible miracle. Lokach, therefore, even though the revelation of these letters of God's speech. Now, these letters of God's speech, they create time also. So time is just a creation. Nira Olam, the world seems to be something, but Dover of. That's why I never, I can't understand these people that say the world has to be, you know, five trillion years old, five quadrillion years old, because God couldn't create it so fast. To me, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, time is also, how long did it take God to create time, right? It took him a trillion years to create time. That's, that's ridiculous. Time, it's just as a creation. It didn't take God any time to create time before God had created time. There was no time. <laughs> What time is it? I don't know. God didn't create it yet. <laughs> but it's low, yes, but God by God, Ain has to vehelam claw. There's no concealment at all. Al can therefore love love in the future. She'd galak of Hashem that will be revealed the glory of Hashem. Shu Bukhinas Gili Atmos, then there'll be the revelation of God's essence. Azai then me me lo yastir shum hester kolo. Then we'll see what an amazing miracle it is that we exist and how much God loves us. He wants us to be here. When there's a revelation of God, it's not just like turning the lights on in the movie theater. All of a sudden, the whole thing goes away. We realize, right, that the life was but a dream. The whole thing was a big bluff and that I don't exist anymore. And that's that's it, right? The sleep pretends to dream. There's not, no, no world. That, no, exactly the opposite. We'll realize how amazingly, incredibly real this world is that God is creating it from nothing all the time. Then there won't be anything concealed in God at all. The Yagila Elokus will be revealed <coughs> godliness also in this physical world. This is, this is the lowest of the four dimensions of reality. It's called Asiya, <coughs> this world. And above that is the world of the angels. That's called Yetzira. And above that is the world of the, it's called the world of the souls. That's called Briya. And above that is the world of godliness. That's the world of Atsilut. In this low world, which is called Asiya, they'll be revealed the essence of God, Ajiru called Basar, until all flesh will see and feel. People will understand 
they'll understand godliness. In order for this revelation to be in the future, therefore, that's why there had to be the Mishkan. That's why there had to be the tabernacle. And this tabernacle, of course, is the forerunner of the Holy Temple, which is a forerunner of the Third Holy Temple. But first of all, there had to be this in the desert in order to in order to start to transform the desert. And that's the idea of the traveling of the Mishkan actually in the world. That was what it was back then. Well, so it is also now. nefesh, In the level of nefesh, what's called the soul, the lowest part of the soul, physically, we also have to learn from this and simulate and copy what was in the Mishkan. And now we're going to get to what is Gershon with the, with the tapestries covering them over. What is this work of Gershon in our soul? As we'll talk about more, God willing, <clears throat> tomorrow. Okay. Wonderful. Here we go. Oh. There we go.